There are a few special tools and parts required for winterizing this outboard. The first one is a set of running muffs. So you can run the outboard on a hose. I prefer the type with the bar through, it gives it a more tight seal. Second thing you'll need is an oil filter wrench. I prefer the channel lock type. Uh, you can use the band type or the type that goes over top with a ratchet as well. A gear lube pump for pumping the gear lube into the bottom end. A grease gun filled with marine grease for putting grease in the nipples on the side of the engine. And an oversized flathead screwdriver for the gear lube drain and the vent. Now in regards to supplies required, this for this engine you'll need an oil filter, a cartridge fuel filter, 5 liters of 10W30 mercury outboard oil, 1 liter of gear lube plus for the bottom end, and a bottle of quick store or any type of fuel stabilizer. The first thing you're going to do is stabilize the fuel because when you're running the engine you want to have this run all the way through the entire system before you put it away for the winter. Uh, I estimate there's about 100 liters of fuel in this tank so I'm going to put about a half a bottle of quick store in the tank. The first thing I'm going to do now that I'm back at the engine is replace this fuel filter. The cartridge style filter is actually quite easy to replace. All you do is unscrew this canister and pull off the cartridge. Slide the new cartridge up into the hole. You'll feel it kind of snap into place and put this piece back on. Once you have the hose on the muffs, you can put them on the lower unit by putting this pin through about the center hole and ensure a tight fit. The tight fit is crucial because you want it to hold the water in so the impeller can pick it up. Now that I've got the water on, I'm going to run it for about 5 to 10 minutes to allow the fuel stabilizer to make its way through the engine. That will also give us enough time for the engine to warm up so the oil will drain easier. When you first start the engine on land, always watch if you have a good stream of water coming out. If you don't, you need to check your muffs and check your water pressure to make sure there's enough water in the lower unit. Now that the engine's been ran for a few minutes and warmed up, I'm going to start the oil change. The first thing I'm going to do is change the oil filter. Using the channel locks, line them up on the side of the filter like so. Get a good grip and turn the filter off. There's going to be a bit of oil left in your filter, so make sure you drain it into the drainage pan before you throw it away. The next step is to install the new filter. Uh, the first thing you want to do is rub the base where the oil filter is going on the block with a rag to clean it. That takes any debris off and ensures a tight seal. And with your new filter, make sure you coat the top, uh, the seal, with engine oil. Never put an oil filter on with a wrench. It is crucial that you only put it on by hand and one turn past when it touches the block because otherwise you're going to have an issue taking it off next year. Now for the fun part. The next step is to take out the oil drain on the side of the engine down here. And once it's loose, make sure that you tilt the engine up a bit and turn it to the left. This is going to allow you to take this plug out and the oil should come out and not run down the side of the engine. Hold your pan up to the side of the engine when you're going to take the plug out. That will ensure that you catch the flow of the oil. Now that the majority of the oil is drained, I'm going to replace the plug and put 5 liters of 1030 mercury outboard oil in the oil fill right here. Alright, now that I've run stabilizer through the fuel and changed oil and filter, the last step is the gear lube in the bottom end. Loosen off the drain plug, the vent plug and the level plug to start while you have the engine tilted. I'm going to first take out the drain and then second, the vent. One other thing to watch for is when you drain the gear lube to take a look at the color of it. The color of this one is rather milky instead of a clear green gear lube. That means that this one needs new seals. So I'm going to replace the seals on all three screws, the vent, the level, and the drain. While you're waiting for the gear loop to drain, you have a perfect opportunity to put grease in the all of the Zerk grease nipples around the steering and the tilt mechanism here. Now that all the gear loops drained out, I put my pump onto the drain plug down here. And I'm going to pump up the gear loop through the bottom end until it comes out the oil level hole. 
Once it comes out that hole, you can put your screws with the new yellow washers in the top, tighten them up, and then take this off and put the drain in. Make sure they're all tight and you're done with the bottom end. But the most important thing to do when you're putting your motor out away for the winter is check the bottom end oil if there's any water in it. If it's milky, when it freezes, it'll expand and crack the bottom end. Other than that, that's all there is to winterizing a 115 four-stroke EFI Merc.